<clears throat> okay, we've got an interesting subject today. Let's build the wall. That's all we hear on TV, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about a case where the wall was built. According to God's instructions, it was built. Be it right or wrong, I'm not touching the one they're trying to build down on the border of Mexico, but usually walls were for defensive purposes mainly. In those ancient cities, uh, as I read in the scripture, most all had walls. And it was to keep the enemy out, was it not? But be that as it may, right now it, it's hinging about building a wall down in uh, the valley and I guess over Arizona and California and all if they're going to complete the course. But in our case of the scripture we're going to be uh, touching on today, there had been a wall, but the wall had been destroyed along with the city of Jerusalem. And God called on Nehemiah to go back and to rebuild the wall. And our lesson today is going to be uh, concerning the wall around Jerusalem. And the one that Nehemiah was to build was some two and a half miles around the city. Uh, when I was over there uh, in the past, I was told that it was like 24 miles around the city now. But in Nehemiah chapter 1, let's read with the scriptures there we have, and I've got a couple of places on the back. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hekeliah, it came to pass in the month of Chesilu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace. Now, if any of y'all got a better pronunciation of those, we'll... Uh, we welcome it. I never was too good on deciphering some of those words. Verse 2, that Hananiah, or Hanani, I'll make that a short I, one of my brethren came, he and certain of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. It came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept, and I mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night. For the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. Two generations have sinned, he was saying. Israel had been carried away captive to Babylon. And the holy city Jerusalem had been destroyed, which had been their history. As I was preparing for the message this week, I read earlier in the week of these figures that I'm about to give you. Jerusalem has been attacked 52 times, captured and recaptured 44 times, besieged 23 times, Destroyed two times. Israel's sins had caught up with them. 
as our nation's sins have been made manifest. Worship of God in the temple had stopped. Now let's uh, think a moment and compare our day with the day back then. In our day, you've got churches everywhere. I worked for Life Touch Church directors for some 25 years. On my account and the churches that we called on, we had 8,000 churches from Mount Pleasant North to Brownsville South. And that's not going far west now. It includes San Antonio area, but 8,000 churches was on our uh, client's list. In Israel, they had one place that they worshiped God, and that was a temple. The temple and the city had been destroyed. Therefore, and they were carried away prisoner. They had not been worshiping God because there was no place to worship. Jerusalem set, as we read there earlier, in bad condition because it had been destroyed. But the important thing is the worship of God in the temple had stopped, had come to an end. And Nehemiah inquired of those that came uh, there about the people back in Jerusalem that were left. And he got a dismal report. And he said, Dear my, those that remain in Jerusalem are in great affliction and reproach. Things are not well at all. And this caused Nehemiah to have a great burden, to be concerned for the condition of the people. And folk, if there was ever time that you and I need a burden, it's now. About the condition of our generation. It's hard to say nation because it involves a generation. The whole populace, if you will, of the world. But Nehemiah determined, as he wept over the condition of his people to do something about it. If you would look at Nehemiah chapter 2 in the middle of your page. It said, It came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him. Now you remember Nehemiah was a king's cupbearer. Nehemiah said, And I looked up the wine, I took up the wine, and gave it unto the king. Now I had not before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Nehemiah, what's wrong with you, boy? Why is thy countenance sad? Seeking thou not sick. Hey, you ain't got the flu. What's your problem? It was obvious that something was bothering Nehemiah. He said, now I had not been before time sad in his presence. And in verse 2 said, wherefore the king said unto me, why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid. He didn't know what the king would do. The king could do anything he wanted to do. Verse 3, and I said unto the king, let the king live forever. And should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, Now, well, you got something going on, as you and I would say it. What do you need? For what does I make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. Lord, help me. 
I'm talking to the king. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it, or if you will, rebuild it. Ezra had been called on, the, the priest had been called on to rebuild the city, or the, the temple. So Nehemiah determined that the wall must be built. And the king agreed. And the king gave permission. And also gave him plenty of help and materials that he would need to rebuild the city. So they started building. And folks, if you're going to do the Lord's work, you're going to find plenty of opposition. And that's what happened. The devil was not happy. And folks, when the Lord blesses a church, you can always uh, count on it. The devil's going to pop up. Somehow or another. He's going to show us colors. The devil wasn't happy with this situation. If you will, let's read Nehemiah chapter 4. They're building the city, rebuilding the, the wall. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth. And he took great indignation, indignation and he mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews do? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? And then verse 3, Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him. And he... He said, look at this, this, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down the stone wall. Man, they, they can't build anything. And what they're building, you know, fox is not very big. I don't know if you've ever been around a fox or not, but a few years back, Linda and I had a, a fox uh, a pair that raised little ones up in Huntington up there. And they're pretty small creatures. They don't get to be very large. But he said a little fox would destroy <laughs> the walls. It sounded like something I'd build. But that wasn't what Nehemiah and the, the men of God were building. They were restoring the place where they could worship God. Now, in case I lose you in the rest of this message, rebuilding the wall was synonymous with getting right with God. And that's what they were trying to do was get right with God. Because the generations had already forsaken God and had gotten in trouble, and God allowed them to be carried away slaves to Babylon. But the devil wasn't happy. And they made fun of Nehemiah as they built the city. If you wouldn't, I look at Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 16. It came to pass from that time forth that half of thy servants, my servants, wrought in the work. And the other half of them helped both spears, the shields, and the bows, and the habitants, or uh, protections, if you will, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. So now, because they were trying to build the wall and the enemy comes to stop them, they have to take up weapons, not only build, but fight a war. And then it came to pass that half of them continued to build and the other half had to Defend the place. And folk, if you're going to do the Lord's work, 
Satan's going to show himself. And that's what happened. But if you would, look at Nehemiah chapter uh, 4, verse 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together under the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. They weren't lazy. Folk, if you're going to do the Lord's work, it, it's hard. It's not easy. It's not popular. But nevertheless, if we are going to serve the Lord here in 2019, it's not easy. And what we're challenging people to do is get right with God. I know you've heard 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 over and over again. And if my people, he didn't say if the devil's people, but if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves to pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive their, land, their sins. But in the process of Israel getting back right with God, they had Ezra, the priest, to bring the book of the law. They had not been reading the book. But now, some of the generation probably had never read it. But if you would look at Nehemiah on the back of your page, Nehemiah 9, verse 2 and 3. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers. And they stood and they confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and they read in the book of the law of the, of the Lord their God. One fourth part of the day. Now notice it says they stood and read for one fourth part of the day. That's six hours, isn't it? And another fourth part, they confessed and they worshiped the Lord their God. Twelve hours. Boy, if you get today, talk over 20 minutes, people start squirming, moving around. But here they stood and paid attention to the word of the Lord for. Twelve hours, six hours, we know they stood. People's attention spans not very long today. That's what they say. But folk, we do well to heed the word of the Lord. I've had pastor friends over the years, and I see nothing wrong with it. But when they'd read their text, they'd always have the congregation to stand. Y'all been in a church that way where they'd have them to stand when they read the scripture? Certainly nothing wrong with that. That's in respect to the scriptures, isn't it? The fact that it's God's word. Now mind you, back in those days, the word of God had not been completed by all, none of the New Testament because it hadn't transpired yet. But what they had, they treasured. And they respected the word of the Lord. But they set out to build a wall. Now let's read. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 12 verse 27. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. They sought the Levites out of all their places. Now, who were the Levites? They were the ones that took care of the places of worship. They were the ones that received the offerings of the animals and so forth.
that sought these out and their places to bring Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgiving and with singing, with cymbals, psalteries, and with harps. Brother, they had a revival, didn't they? God people need a revival today. Our generation is like Israel was. We need to build a wall of separation from the devil Amen. and wickedness. Folks, that's the problem. Too many Christians try to hang on to the world. And they get caught up in it, don't they? In brief, we need to turn back to God as a whole. The Lord's people. Our country's got a lot of problems. I'd hate to be in Washington right now because nothing, period, will get done. Each party is thinking too much about party's sake, not about the people's sake. But even if a worthy cause were to come forth with them, they're so divided. They don't want one side to look good. But that's, we're not going to fix Washington, Norway. But I can tell you this much, if God's people will get right, we can fix our part of it. And I tell you, I'm not preaching about uh, the wall that our president wants to build. It'd probably be a good thing. But again, the wall you and I need to be concerned with is how close we are to God. And each one of you know how close that is. All right, I'm going to close there and ask the Lord to bless his word.